Dr. Akbar Ali Khan Sahib, who is a consultant neurosurgeon. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning. How are you? Wa Alaikum Assalam. I'm very good. Thank you very much for joining us. Many thanks for inviting me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And so first things first, I'm going to get started with for a person who was, who was actually in USA or in UK, you know, who got his training in UK and then moved to USA for fellowship and then practiced there for a year and a half because practice over there is very kind of, you know, you can generate a lot of money. Why would you come back to Pakistan? Yeah, so it's a very interesting question. And I think uh, you answered it yourself in your introduction that uh, you were quite scared about your surgery when yeah, you were yeah, getting yeah. operated for your back surgery and you had to go outside because you didn't have the, uh, somehow the confidence or the faith in what was going on. Exactly. And essentially, uh, I thought that there is a need for people like me to come back. So you have to go and see a Pakistani surgeon up in England. Yeah. Well, I bring that to you here now. Wow. And uh, essentially, I haven't done one surgery. I've done thousands of surgeries. Uh, and No, uh, we're in, back in Pakistan now. In Pakistan, in, uh, I've started here four months ago, essentially. Okay. And uh, I've started, like, I've started day case surgery. I do day case uh, spinal surgery. So the disc operation that you've done, uh, obviously, there's a stigma attached to it that, oh, uh, I don't want to have it done. I'd rather ha be in pain or yeah. I'll get it done somewhere outside. Well, no, I've, been st I've started this surgery back in Pakistan as well here right now in Islamabad. Wow. Uh, I operate in the morning and uh, most of my patients have gone home in the afternoon uh, pain-free. Wow. Without any complications. Uh, this is one thing that I do, but on top of that, this is all about minimal invasive neurosurgery. The sole reason that I posed this question to you was of the fact that obviously, you know, you're, you're adding value to a person's life who's actually in pain and mm -hmm. getting him rid of that particular pain is value for that patient. Mm -hmm. But then there needs to be a, a, a payback as well. And I, I don't think that, you know, hospitals over here within Pakistan can actually do justice with the amount of value doctors are adding to the patient's life. Uh, I think we are uh, doing justice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would like to change a little bit and add to you. Sure. Uh, I mean, because you mentioned spine. Yeah. It's not the only thing I do. I'm a exactly. neurosurgeon. Uh, there are new things which I have also brought here, uh, include uh, minimal invasive endoscopic neurosurgery. So yeah. what I we do is that. We've got some images as well, so if you feel yeah. like explaining so, them. So, uh, for example, uh, this is the case I'm doing. I mean, essentially, uh, what you have to do is that uh, you make a smaller incision yeah. on a patient's head or whenever you're going through a brain, uh, the likelihood of complications is less if the incision on the brain itself is small as well. And then you can take a tumor out, uh, whichever size it is, through a very small incision in the brain. And you can do that by putting an endoscope. So now this is another case I was doing uh, here in Islamabad, uh, which is taking uh, brain tumors out through the nose. So essentially without making any cut. Wow. So I put the camera in. Uh, which is an endoscope, uh, and then I take uh, the tumor out. So these things are happening here in Islamabad yeah. right now. Uh, and only and in Islamabad, I think. No, or not am, only in or Islamabad. Or am I assuming? No, 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 not only in Islamabad. Okay. They are uh, happening around here as well. Uh, but uh, I have brought these things uh, essentially to Islamabad. Okay, very nice. Yeah, yeah. So that people, uh, and, and to gain confidence of the people that, okay, if I'm doing minimal invasive neurosurgery, uh, it's your own benefit, essentially. One, okay, okay, I've been trained outside. You have to go outside and get your surgery done. Yeah. You don't have to go outside. Yeah. You can get your surgery done the same way, done here. Exactly. In now, Islamabad. Finally, finally now we can Not do finally. I mean, because it's been four we have got talent in Islamabad as well. We've I got mean, talent not, in I'm Pakistan. Not, I'm not saying or I'm not challenging that we do not have talented doctors over here, but I think that the technology required yes. for minimal invasive surgery was missing. Because so I, I went through a lot of research while yeah. I was uh, very worried about my back pain. So obviously my hospital has spent a lot of money yeah. uh, on the equipment. Exactly. Uh, some of it has arrived and some of it is on the way. Uh, which will be here uh, with us, and that equipment is important okay. uh, because neurosurgery is not a hammer and chisel specialty anymore. Exactly. It has evolved quite a bit. Even it evolved during my training when I was getting trained. Uh, so it's been like almost like 16, 17 years. Yeah. And neurosurgery has evolved to a to a newer level. Uh, newer level. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and so that's what we are bringing here. Okay, so that's brilliant. So now, now let's let's dig into it. Now, so for, for what kind of problems do people come to you first of all? And then where do you use your expertise, in which areas? So first of all, we are going to identify the areas wherever minimal invasive surgery can be helpful, and then we'll talk about them separately. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so uh, patients who come to me, like for example, pituitary tumors, uh, they are very common. People can come uh, present with uh, uh, visual field problems, they can't see properly. Uh, there was a case, uh, the video just went through, I think I operated on him. Uh, is one of the illustrative cases that I did here. Uh, and then you can do the case uh, through the nose. You don't even have to make a cut on his uh, head. I took the tumor out through his nose and he went home. Now this surgery is, is, has been around for a while, okay? Yeah. Uh, but the way I do it is slightly different. I do it with an endoscope, which is a different way of doing it. But on top of that, people come with brain tumors. Uh, brain tumors around the brain. So uh, the access to that, you can have Neuro navigation, which is kind of a GPS, brain GPS. Okay. So you mark where the tumor is, okay. you make a smaller incision, and then you can put either an endoscope or depending on how you feel, you can take it out without causing any harm to the patient. That is the key. Yeah. So the key is not to harm the patient because whatever I do is neurosurgery. It's serious. Exactly. It is uh, very serious. Essentially. Uh, and the idea is to do it uh, minimal invasive. The reason being for that is that less harm to patient, early recovery, you go home sooner. Exactly. And that is what uh, we are doing. At so that's great. Now, uh, I believe that, you know, obviously, you know, when you're operating on a brain, you know, there's definitely certain areas within your own brain where, you know, you cannot have access. Mm -hmm. So are we trying to convince or are we trying to tell or are we trying to prove that with minimal invasive surgery, we can reach at any point within the brain if the GPS is working properly? No, it's not that. I mean, uh, there are certain areas of the brain you still can't operate okay. on. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, it's not that you can't operate, you can operate anywhere. It's just, we have to, uh, there's a... Risk analysis, a Risk analysis, yeah. or the idea of a neurosurgeon standard uh, in training, which is ingrained in you, is that do no harm. Okay. Uh, so if you think you're going to operate on a place and you're going to cause more harm, yeah. then it's not worth doing it. This minimal invasive is now available in Islamabad. You don't yeah. have to travel that far. Uh, South Pakistan or anywhere, and you can get it done here. So if you don't mind me asking, would you mind sharing the finances involved for somebody who's actually watching right now, mm -hmm. so, you know, so, so that we could actually give him a generic idea of that, yeah. you know, if you've got... Yes, yeah, so the good thing is, uh, when you develop a brain tumor uh, or a severe spinal problem, uh, you don't think about money because essentially it's either you're going to die or you're going to get paralyzed. Yeah. These are serious issues that exactly. you're dealing with. So whenever a patient comes to me, this is a new thing. Obviously, I've come to Pakistan, so people tend to ask about money. I do tell them that this is a serious thing. Yeah. So life is much more worth don't than think about any money. money. Uh, but uh, in reality, I do see my hospital provides uh, care to private uh, yeah. patients. And at the same time, I see patients who can't afford anything. So falahi, we call them. Yeah. And I see falahi patients as well. And I do surgery for free. Wow. So it's all available for you. So how whether long you can does it afford take? it or whether you can't afford yeah. it, you, we will still provide care to you. How long is the operation going to take? Yeah. And my answer to them is very simple. Does it matter to you how long the operation takes or how you will be after the operation? Yeah. Time is not important. Yeah. So I give them a reassurance that this is the risk of surgery and this would be your outcome and this is the expected outcome, especially endoscopic pituitary surgeries, that this would be 90% cure rate I can give you like it or not, it's up to you. Let's talk about the risks involved within doing this procedure. So now, you, since you mentioned that, you know, whenever a patient comes in, you're mm -hmm. going to let him know or her mm -hmm. know about the risks involved. And then obviously with the time thing, you're mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm not going to say that it's two minutes or two hours. Mm -hmm. But what matters is that you need to come out fine. Mm -hmm. So how, how long it is doesn't really matter. And I think the patient needs mm -hmm. to understand that. So what are the challenges? Yeah. So uh, as we are on the team of minimal invasive neurosurgery, yeah. the risks are the same as <coughs> open surgery. Okay. okay? Uh, there is no difference between minimal invasive or uh, open surgery when the risks come into play. Yeah. And the uh, serious surgery that we do, obviously, they, it does carry a risk to life. Uh, but when people come to us, they're in a situation that if we don't operate, yeah. uh, they're not going to make it, so then, some of them. Yeah. So essentially that risk kind of outweighs itself, again, in favor of benefit uh, towards surgery. But uh, with minimal invasive, the only thing that I add to them is that you're going to go home soon, you're yeah. going to feel better soon, and you'll most likely be having lunch or tea in Munal later on in the evening. You try and bring a change, uh, there is uh, always a resistance and there is always, that's a yeah, challenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, challenges and uh, convincing people that we are bringing this new technology. So every time this happens, this is yeah. a standard thing. 
uh, it takes time. Thank you very much for bringing this technology to Pakistan. But one last thing, that is, are you even training other people over here in Pakistan for minimal invasive surgery? Yes, so this is something, uh, obviously it's got a very uh, steep learning curve, okay. So uh, my idea is to establish uh, yeah. uh, this whole center where I'm working as a minimal invasive neurosurgical uh, service. Wow. Uh, and then in due course, we'll train people. We have got trainees and the idea is to train them so that they don't have to go anywhere else to get trained. But wow. this will take time. Okay. This will take time. And, and you know, since you mentioned that uh, while you were doing your training, the, the medical technology was evolving. So while you're practicing, it's evolving as well, right? So do you, are you guys working on that too as well? Yeah, so what I do is that I still stay up to date. This is something which I'm teach, uh, teaching my trainees now as well, that you don't have to read a book which was written 20 years ago yeah. and you're still reading the same and going for the same exam. Yeah. Uh, read journals, go to international conferences. You have to uh, come on par with whatever is happening in the exactly. West. And for that, you have to be in touch with everything. Exactly. And if you're not, you're going to lag behind. So thank you very much, Dr. Akbar, for being with us.